It was 1942, and nearly 60,000 acres of East Tennessee landscape would soon become part of the most significant defense strategy in the history of the United States, the Manhattan Project. The site was picked for a, a number of reasons. Well, they wanted a site that was uh, easily furnished with good electricity. So the Army engineers came in there and condemned the land. So when my great-grandmother had to leave, it was difficult for her. She never quite understood why we had to leave, even though my granddaddy said, Ma, we got to go. By June 1943, Construction had begun on a two million square foot plant known as K-25. K for Kellex Corporation, the primary contractor for the massive structure, and 25, the war code for uranium-235. The plant would enrich uranium using a gaseous diffusion process. So the place you all the concrete pulled on that, down in that area. You went to work seven o'clock in the morning, might be seven the next morning when you get off. It was an absolutely amazing sight to see how f rapidly this construction was going on. Actually, it was being built around the clock, seven days a week. It was mind-boggling. In all, 12,000 workers would construct the great plant in less than two years. The thing that was uh, unique about it, however, was the tremendous amount of piping the large number of motors and centrifugal pumps that were being installed. Without a doubt, the major engineering feat of all times. When you stop to think we were just starting with the farmland and getting people of all types and get this job done with such a short period of time, I don't believe that uh, anybody thought it could be done. Ultimately, K-25's product would fuel the atomic bomb and help end World War II. Post-war, the plant supported both defense and commercial efforts until 1964. In early 64, uh, I was assigned in, in charge of the whole K-25 building to shut the building down. In a matter of weeks, we removed all the inventory, put it in safe standby, and terminated all the people that were working there. Much of the building remained idle for 38 years. In 2002, the Department of Energy initiated a cleanup strategy for K-25. We started an accelerated uh, cleanup plan for the Oak Ridge Reservation. So that plan was really to start to take down buildings, big buildings. By 2003, an accelerated cleanup and closure contract was in place, and workers began to prepare for K-25 demolition. Size alone made the task daunting. Three University of Tennessee football stadiums would fit into its footprint. Workers would encounter an unprecedented amount of legacy debris. As crews began the colossal task of cleaning up the 60-year-old building, they quickly discovered significant structural deterioration caused by time and weather. Water infiltration created many, many problems with the uh, integrity of the building. The 40-some-odd acres of roof were leaking badly. The upper floors of the building were crumbling. While working on the operating floor, the concrete gave way, sending a worker 30 feet to the floor below. We were very fortunate that he wasn't killed, he was injured. But that was one of those moments in time when you really have to ask yourself, is this so different that we need to look at doing the work in a different way? Consequently, the Department of Energy and its contractor stopped work to reassess the K-25 demolition strategy. The wisdom of what we do says that you have to know when the plan you have is not working and it needs to be changed. The direction that we found was to demolish the building from the outside in rather than clean it out from the inside out as we had done on the other three uh, gaseous diffusion buildings that had already been completed in Oak Ridge. But before a single truckload of K-25 debris could be shipped, an unrelated transportation event changed the project's waste disposal approach. We had an incident. We're hauling a piece of equipment uh, to the disposal cell, and there was some liquid in that equipment, and it leaked on Highway 95. 
it is unacceptable to have hazardous radioactive material leaking on a public highway. Let's build a haul road to get there. And we did. With an updated demolition strategy to improve worker safety and the haul road to eliminate truck traffic on public highways, building demolition began in 2008. Two years later, crews had completed K-25's west wing. In August 2011, URS CH2M Oak Ridge assumed cleanup responsibilities at K-25. UCOR accelerated cleanup process by implementing a pack-as-you-go waste handling approach. Waste was hauled as it was generated, resulting in lower life cycle costs, schedule efficiency, and reduced risk of compliance issues associated with aging waste. What we did was come in and make it so that we would package and ship the waste for disposal as soon as it was generated, as soon as the building was demolished. We'll have anywhere from 20 dump trucks lined up out here. The debris has to be inspected as it goes into the truck. Then the truck is inspected, and then we ship it to the EMWMF. The last section of K-25 contained radioactive contaminants left behind in piping and other components. Because these contaminants required special handling, UCOR initiated a waste segregation strategy that expedited the sorting process. Instead of pulling a lot of the pipe out that we had done before discovery item, we've uh, painted them blue so that during demolition we can segregate them and then treat them differently. Instead of putting people in harm's way uh, doing physical work in a building that's falling down. We're using heavy machinery during demolition to segregate it and then size reduce it and package it appropriately for this position. We've been able to accelerate the completion of the K-25 demolition uh, over the last several months, um, and that's through a lot of hard work. We came here specifically to get the work done safely. And so what it means to me is it's a testimony to the people that work here their dedication and the fact that they can do this kind of work safely and achieve project completion ahead of schedule and under budget. Just the thought of taking down a building that's over 70 years old, it's the first and largest demo in the complex, but this is with the equipment inside the building. In the end, a management worker partnership anchored by safety, ingenuity, and flexibility enabled K-25 completion. As the last wall falls, we at the Department of Energy and UCOR pay homage to the people who built and operated K-25 and to those whose hard work and dedication removed environmental legacies. It's bigger than just tearing the building down. It, it's a, a symbol of what the country did uh, to, to enrich uranium to be prepared for World War II. It's an icon, which is why it'll be a historic park when we're done. In the spot where the story began, we will leave a reminder of the role the mighty K-25 played in a nation's past and its future.